Hey everybody, what's going on? Thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some rattle traps, you know, lipless crankbait, whatever you wanna call it. So, you know, right here, obviously, you got your your standard your standard rattle trap, you know, the, the original rattle trap, and then here, you know, you have a, a more modern, uh, like a Strike King version of a rattle trap, you know, all, all the same, you know, just, just a lipless crankbait. And what I'm gonna be talking about is, you know, kind of what I look for when throwing it. And the main thing is my setups, you know, the line I use, the rod, the reel, stuff like that, changing treble hooks, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. So my main rod that I'm using, my main setup for a lipless crankbait, rattle trap, whatever you wanna call it, if I can grab it, is a seven foot one medium action rod with um, a fast tip. So I'll say it again, a seven foot one medium action with a fast tip. And I like, I like that seven foot one. It's a little bit longer for me for a crankbait rod, you know, a, a big crankbait, like a five, six, eight XD, you know, you use a big seven and a half or a seven foot 10 rod. But most of my crankbaits, I'm throwing like a six foot, six foot 10, six foot nine, you know, a shorter rod. So I kind of go up a little bit for my rattle traps. I'm, like I said, a seven foot one, medium action rod, and I'm using 12 pound fluorocarbon. And this is my open water setup. And by saying this, I'm talking about, you know, throwing it over a big flat, throwing it over a point. You know, if you have a, a shale bar or a sand bar, whatever it may be, if you're in open water, where you don't have much cover around you, much structure, I'll throw this bait right, or this setup right here. You know, like I said, it, this is for open water, you know, not much cover, not much grass or wood for the bait to get around or the line to get uh, frayed up against. This is just my open water setup, you know, just cast that thing out, reel it back, pop it, all that good stuff. And I like to use a seven to one to one gear ratio reel for this. Just because you know I can, if I want to, I can go, I can go really slow, or if I need to, I can burn it pretty quick. But seven to one is just kind of in the middle where you're not going super fast or super slow. I just, I just like that in between gear ish gear ratio. But like I said, for this setup, this is where I'm looking at throwing it around. Like I said, throwing it across a point, throwing it ac across a bar or a hump, paralleling something like a seawall or some boat docks, just some riprap maybe, just anywhere where you're throwing this in open water where you don't have many, many things to rub up against or get around is when I use this, this setup right here. And my other setup is not much different, but it is different and it's worth, you know, mentioning the difference in it. Like I said, for my main, just open water, normal, normal rattle trap fishing, a seven foot one medium action rod with a fast tip, and then just like a, a regular rattle trap, you know, it doesn't matter the brand. Always put you some better hooks on there or sharpen your hooks. Yeah, I had a comment in my other video. They said, why not just sharpen the hooks instead of buying different hooks? You can do whatever works for you. If you just want to spend the money and buy some extra hooks, some good hooks, you can do that. Or take the time and sharpen the ones that come on it. Like I said, just that seven foot one, medium action, seven to one gear ratio reel. And anywhere between, between 10 and 12 pound fluorocarbon is what I like to use on that one. And my other setup, which is, you know, for more like this time of the year, you know, early pre-spawn, you know, you, you like to throw that, that red pellet right there. So this right here is a seven foot one medium heavy rod. And you might think, oh, what's the difference? You know, that's, that's not much difference, you know, blah, 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 whatever. But this setup right here is what I'm gonna be doing my grass fishing in. Or, you know, like I'm saying, grass fishing it, rich, ripping out a hydrilla, throwing, say you're fishing a bar or a flat and it's got a bunch of stumps in it, all kinds of stumps. We're gonna want a little bit beefier rod, a little bit heavier line, just all that good stuff. So this right here is my, my heavier setup, you know, my, my thick cover or my, my grass fishing, fishing around wood, boat docks, whatever it may be. If you're fishing, like I said earlier, if you're, if you're parallel on boat docks, you might wanna use the, the normal setup on a floating boat dock. But if you're fishing a metal boat dock with poles or a wooden boat dock, you might want to use this one. You just kind of you got to think of the situation and think where your line might get frayed up or stuff that a fish may drag you around. But this right here is what I'm using. Picture, you know, fishing the TVA lakes or down in Florida or a Lake Seminole. You have a lot of grass, you know, big, big open bays, lots of grass, topped out, however it may be. 
popping it out of the hydrilla. This is my setup that I go to. Like I said, seven foot one, medium heavy. And if you're a little bit taller, you could go up to a seven, a seven three or a seven four, maybe even a seven five. I, for me, I probably wouldn't go over like a seven four, but I'm not very tall. If, I mean, if you were if you were six three, six four, you might go up to a, a seven and a half foot rod just to get some better distance. But for me, just my overall setups, that seven foot one, medium heavy. Same gear ratio reel, that seven to one to one, but I'm using either 15 or 17 pound fluorocarbon. And you might think that's that's pretty heavy for a crankbait, you know, it might affect the action. But when you're fishing, mainly this is my setup for grass fishing. Like I said, it's, it is for other things, but mainly fishing that hydrilla, fishing that milfoil, eelgrass, whatever it may be. This is my setup and I want that heavier, that heavier fishing line just to help me pop that bait. I mean, if you're constantly popping it, popping that bait, ripping it out of the grass, and you're hitting stuff, you know, hitting that grass, you might hit something else in the water. You don't want your line to have any frays or nicks in it. So this this heavier line really, really helps you fight that. So like I said, that's, that's my heavier setup. Just the same ones, same length, just a, a medium heavy action and a beefier fishing line. And like I said, this right here, if you're looking for a good crankbait, this time of the year, good lipless, that, that red, that red color is awesome this time of the year and the next couple months. And the little, a little secret that I've got, and this is for extreme conditions and it's going to be braid. If you're fishing a lake that has a, an extreme amount of grass or heavy cover, you know, standing timber, anything where it's like extreme cover, you know, super, super rough conditions. You're going to want to use braided line. Mainly, you're going to want to use this braid if you're fishing in heavy, 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 dense grass. I'm talking about like, it looks like you're on dry land, like just a ridiculous amount of grass. You're going to want to use this braided line, and you can really pop that lipless crankbait. I mean, I'm talking about you can just yank it and rip it through that, through that grass, and this braid is just going to act like a razor and just slice through all that stuff. And like I said, this is, this is for extreme conditions. I know of some people that throw throw braid up at Gunnersville, down at Seminole, you know, areas like that that just have a ridiculous amount of grass. I mean, it, it'll, it can help you get a better hookup in that thick stuff. Just like I said, in extreme, extreme conditions, you can go to a braided line. But I just wanted to mention this in this video because, you know, a lot of people may not really think about throwing braid on a crankbait or whatever else, but... When the conditions call for it, you can definitely get by with using braided line and it's not that big of a deal. And like I said, that's that's my main setups. Most of the time I'm using that seven foot one medium action, just open water fishing. But if I go to a, a Tennessee River Lake, if I go down to Florida, if I go to a Seminole where there's an area that's got a lot of grass in it, I'm gonna go to that little bit beefier setup with some heavier fishing line just to make sure that nothing happens, no line breaks, and make sure that I can just have some control over that fish once I do hook it. Because this is the time of the year you can catch some truly giant fish. So you wanna have the right equipment for that. And like I said, you know, it doesn't, this, isn't a, this isn't a video about what bait to throw, you know, you wanna do this, you wanna do that. So I'll just show like, for example, here's a, a Strike King, a Red Eye Shadow. It's a great lure, KVD's won the classic on it. And it sounds, hopefully you can hear it. So it's got a lot of BBs in it. And then here's compared to a, just the standard rattle trap. I'll shake it. It has even more BBs in it. So I'll, I'll give you a little comparison real quick. So I'm gonna go with the rattle trap first. And then here's the Strike King. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to hear maybe on the video, but in person, there's obviously a, a difference in these two baits. Just about every bait you get, whether it's a, a Strike King, a rattle trap, a Lucky Craft, LV 500, you know, whatever the bait may be, you just kind of play around, figure out a sound or a, a vibration that you like with the bait and just roll with it. It's really a good time of the year to experiment with these different baits, but my main point for this video was just to get across the different setups and what I look for, but like I said, you know, just, you can really play around with different baits, different styles of rattle traps this time of the year, but if you want to try to go catch some fish right now, I'd say tie on a red color and find some dingy water. Or if you're on a clear water lake, you can try a shad pattern. Or, you know, a gold pattern might work better if you're down in Florida or South Georgia somewhere. So that's just some just some things you might think about trying. But my main thing in this video was just kind of showing you my setups and really wanted to just to throw this little teaser in there with the with the braided fishing line. You might think I'm crazy, but I promise you, if, if you're fishing thick enough grass, this braided line will really come into play and help you out in the long run. But 
Thank you all for watching this video. I know I haven't been actually fishing on the water recently. It's just kind of school starting back and it's really cold on the weekends and I've got stuff going on. So it's just, it's hard to get out on the, get out on the lake, especially this time of the year. The weather's, the weather's so crazy. One day it'll be 70 degrees and then it's snowing the next. So hopefully in the next couple weeks, things will settle down and I can get back to fishing and doing videos like normal. That's what I like to do. I enjoy these type of videos, but obviously I know y'all like to watch me go out on the lake and catch fish. I do too. I don't like, you know, just listening to people talk that much. So I understand if you don't like these videos or if you don't watch them, that that's fine. I get that. So just stick with me and sometime here pretty soon I'll get back on, get back out on the lake and do some real fishing. But until then, thank you so much and be on the lookout for my next video coming out Friday. Thanks.